The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to infer the meaning of unfamiliar words or images in familiar contexts by using knowledge of grammar, word attack skills, contextual clues, sound, color, design, placement, and by using the senses as well as reread, review, and to revise to promote understanding. Don't you love the smell of my biscuits? My mother baked a whole batch yesterday and the house smells delicious. Oh, I love the smell of vanilla. It takes me back to when I was about five or six years old. I used to get up every Saturday morning to help my mother bake biscuits. I would eat more dough than I probably should and end up with a terrible stomach ache. But it's actually amazing to see how powerful our strength of smell is and how it actually connects us to memories. Hmm, I know what you mean. Sometimes when I pass someone with a particular brand of aftershave, it reminds me so clearly of my grandfather. It is as if I can see him standing right there in front of me. I'm sure all of you at home have smells that help you to remember key moments in your lives. In fact, our sense of smell is the sense most clearly connected to our memories, and it too can help us to read our world. Hi, I'm Becky, and this is Ntabi. In the last episode, we examined what it meant to infer meaning, and so today, we're really going to get hands-on with these skills. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to Explain how we use our senses to help us read our world. Explain the meaning of terms, color, design, and placement. Explain how examining these things can provide clues to help one infer meaning. Explain the importance of rereading and reviewing a text, and you should be able to use these skills. Using our eyes is the most obvious way of reading our world, but it is definitely not our only way of reading the world. In fact, we are all using our senses all the time to help us find out more about the world that we live in. Let's begin with a little experiment. Close your eyes and listen very carefully. What is you here? Share your ideas with the person sitting next to you. Decide where you think that sound bite was recorded. So, and Tabby, what did you think? Definitely an office. There were telephones ringing, people talking, the doors opening and closing. It sounded like there were a number of people who were all working in a common space. But what makes you think that it was an office? What if it was just another place where people would gather? Well, the telephone were ringing, but there was this very polite lady who kept on answering the phone with a, good morning, can I help you? She definitely sounded like she was in an office, a receptionist or something. Fantastic. You have discovered a great deal by using your sense of hearing. But what about using your sense of smell? Well, I know from my past experience that my sense of smell helps me to tell me when I'm almost home, even if I've been sleeping in the taxi on the whole trip. And how's that? Well, we have to pass this chemical factory and it stinks. Oof, that's not so nice. <laughs> nope. Okay, let's try another little experiment. If you can smell yeast, where are you likely to be? With your partner, make a list of all the places you are likely to find a yeast smell. Any ideas? You'd use yeast when making bread, so surely if you were in a kitchen or bakery, you'd smell it. That's right. You'd also smell it in a place where beer is brewed, such as a brewery. This is because yeast is also used when making beer. You can see how our senses help us to read our world. Now, we very seldom use only one sense as we have just done. Generally, we use all our senses all the time without even realizing it. This is because we are surrounded by so much information. And the only way we can process it is by using all our senses. Is that why when a person loses one of their senses, their other senses become more sensitive? Absolutely. A person who has lost their sense of sight will probably have more sensitive hearing. This is because their hearing has to make up for their lack of sight. In exactly the same way someone who has lost their hearing will compensate by using their eyes far more. 
As with anything, you can improve your sensory skills through practice. You can practice using your sense of hearing by sitting quietly with your eyes closed and listening for sounds you normally would not notice. You can also practice your senses of smell, touch, and taste by playing a simple game. Collect a number of smelly things in bottles like coffee and a little hot water, soap, or milk. Collect a number of touchy-feely things such as feather, some dough, and so on. And then collect some things that can be tasted. Put all of these on a tray, blindfold someone, and get them to guess what they are touching, smelling, or tasting. Your senses pick up clues about the world around you, and through these clues, you are able to infer things about this world. Now let's consider your sense of sight. But surely we all know how to see. Yes, but are we able to read what we see? <laughs> I'm afraid you've lost me altogether. Okay. Everything we see can be more completely appreciated if we understand a few basic design elements. By understanding how these elements work, you are able to more carefully read what is around you. These basic elements are color, shape, and line. Artists and designers use their knowledge of how people react to these elements to guide the choices they make when designing advertisements, logos, posters, billboards, and so on. Have a look at this billboard we spotted while we were out in the taxi. With your partner, write down what you think this billboard is telling you. Then share your thoughts to see if you have similar ideas. Now, at first glance, you may think that it's quite obvious what the billboard is telling you. But only once you've looked more closely, are you able to work out how it is telling you this. Let's start by doing some research. This billboard is the first in a campaign developed for Love Life for 2005. On the Love Life website, this campaign is described as follows. The Love Life attitude is one of hip, happening, highly motivated youth pursuing their aspirations. It is young people shaping their personal future and the world they want to live in. It is responsible, innovative, informed, motivated, inspired, and dedicated go-getters who make their choices based on this. The Love Life generation seizing opportunities, rising to the challenges of the times and leading South Africa into a new AIDS-free era. So according to this, the campaign has to be hip and happening? Yes, it is one of hip and happening so that the youth will understand that having an attitude is fashionable. Anyway, let's not run away with ourselves. Let's go back to the basics, the elements. First, let's look at color. Color is the hue that can be seen when light is reflected off an object. Colors can be divided according to how warm or cool they are. A true blue is a cold color, while a true red is a hot color. All the other colors in the spectrum are warmer or colder, depending on the amount of red or blue that is contained within them. So orange would be a warm color and green would be a cool color? Yes, warm color seems to advance or move towards us, while cool color seems to recede or move away from us. Certain colors mean certain things. Last time I made a Zulu beadwork with my grandmother and she taught me what each color means. Like this bracelet I got from a friend of mine. Purple for friendship, white for hope, and blue for faithfulness. But this is where we must be careful with color. Although there are some universal understandings about certain colors, different cultures have different meanings for color. Therefore, when we think about why a particular color has been used, we must always consider its context. Colors can also make you feel a particular way. When I wanted to paint my room bright green, my mom thought I was nuts. And now she agrees that my room is such a cool and calm place to be. Absolutely. If you had painted your entire room red, you would have probably felt so aggressive you'd start beating up on your brother. <laughs> I'd do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's look at color on our billboard. Write down why you think the colors on the billboard have been used. Share your thoughts with a partner. The pink is vivid. It leaps right off the billboard. It definitely grabs your eye. And the green is bright and funky. The two colors together really catch your attention. Yep, and they're both young and hip colors. But now let's talk about shape. Shape is the external surface or outline of an object or body. For example, a square, a circle, or even less obvious and more organic shapes. 
The only shapes in this billboard are the black triangle at the bottom and the circles behind the words, get attitude. The choice of the triangle is important. A triangle is a far less traditional shape. For example, you would never call a person a triangle, but you may call someone a square. In this billboard, the triangle seems to suggest a break with tradition. But more about this just now, when we get to design. Now let's think about line. Line may be defined as a visual path left by a moving point. Just like color, line can also create a feeling or mood. For example, how does this line make you feel? Ntabi? The line seems to be quite aggressive and angry, don't you think? Yep. And this one? Calming or natural, maybe? Yes. The curved lines are more organic and therefore feel more natural. Writing styles also tend to work in this way. Look at these two fonts. The one is far more traditional and formal, and the other is very casual. Where do you think you would use these two fonts? The one might be quite nice for advertising an event like a wedding or a symphony concert. And the other one would be quite nice for advertising a two first party or a guaito concert. Great. Okay, let's go back to the billboard. What lines and fonts do you see in this billboard and what do they tell you? The fonts on this billboard are quite interesting. The words love life are very loose and relaxed. They actually look as if someone wrote them freehand. The edges of the letters are also not neat and clean. They seem to be quite rough. The words get attitude, however, are written in a more traditional style, and they are all in capitals. I'm not sure what all this means, though. Well, let's see what we can infer from what you have found. It seems to suggest that an important part of living your life is about being relaxed and free. Perhaps the idea is that you should not be afraid to be yourself. Yes, and that you should stand out as an individual. Okay. Now what about the words get attitude? They're written in capitals so they stand out and are obviously important. They are also part of a stamp of some kind. Yes, there's a big stamp across there that looks like a stamp which you'd use to post a letter. You also get stamps that are put onto official documents. These stamps prove that the document is an original. So we need to get attitude in order to be original. That fits in. There are some things though that don't make sense. Like what? Why are the words love life written at an angle? Good question. Let's look at design. An artist will make choices about how things must be laid out on the page, where things are placed, whether they overlap, what is in front or the foreground of the picture, and what is in the background of the picture. These are all very conscious decisions. Design can therefore be defined as the purposeful or inventive arrangement of parts or details. In this billboard, it is interesting to note that not only do the words love life run diagonally across the billboard, they also run over the edges of the billboard, as if they don't fit in. They explode over the sides. This could also be suggesting that if you strive to be an individual, then nobody will ever be able to contain you. You'll always be free. You can indeed infer that. Here's a task for you to try. Design your own billboard for the Get Attitude Love Life campaign. Think carefully about each choice that you make, considering how you will use color, line, shape, and so on in your design. Then swap your finished design with a partner and then read and reread their design. Finally, check with your partner whether the meanings you have inferred are correct. So now you can see that the process of designing a visual text is not a simple one. Every choice that is made must be carefully thought through to make sure that it says what the designer wants it to say. I never realized that reading visual text was so involved. It doesn't need to be involved. The best way to read any text is to take one step at a time. Read the text and then consider an aspect of it. Reread it and consider another aspect of it and so on. In this way, you will build up an understanding of the text and it also doesn't need to feel like an impossible task. Unfortunately, time has come to an end, but we will be back with our next lesson in this series on reading the world. But from myself and in Tabby, we'd like to say goodbye. Bye.